Hello everyone, welcome to Target Focus Life. My name's Steve and today I have the CZ1012 semi-auto shotgun. So if you're looking for a detailed in-depth review, you come to the right place, let's go! The day has finally come. I'm reviewing the much anticipated CZ1012. A lot of you viewers have been asking for this over the life of this channel. I said in December when I made a video that I would get around to reviewing the CZ1012. It's been interestingly one of the most requested shotguns. I think partly because there's not a lot of content out there on the 1012. So today we're gonna dive into the review of the CZ1012 in just a minute, but first, I wanna point out the links down in the description. If you get value out of the content that we're producing, consider checking out these links. There's many different ways you can support the Target Focus Life channel, one of which would be purchasing some of the products that I use, such as the Axel Ghost Strike, wireless Bluetooth, ESS Ballistic iPro, Otis cleaning products and Shooter's Choice cleaning products, and many more. Oh, by the way, you can get a TFL hat if you want one, they're now available on the Reed's website, I'll put a link for that as well. Lastly, you can join the TFL community. This is a community on the TFL website, members only, where I'm making the post about guns, we're engaging. I give a little bit of extra love to those folks. If you comment on YouTube, on social media, I will try to get back to you, but it's the TFL insiders that by far get most of my attention. Also, we're gonna have exclusive events down the road, lots of great opportunities there. Consider checking that out as well. Now let's dive into the CZ-1012. Starting off with specs, the MSRP of this shotgun is 749 in the all-terrain. The one I have here is the all-terrain. If you just got the basic field model, it is 679. But of course, I got this 1012 from Reed. So they often have much better prices than MSRP. Definitely worth checking out. The CZ1012 is a 12 gauge shotgun, inertia operated. Comes in at six pounds, eight ounces. So actually feels really nice as far as weight. Length of pull is 14 and a quarter inches right out of the box. The drop at comb is an inch and a half. The drop at heel is two and a quarter. So you have three quarter inch drop on the comb. Now intended use, this is just a, a versatile shotgun. It's not necessarily just for waterfall, just for upland, just for trap shooting. I think it can do probably a lot of things well, but we're gonna put that to the test. I've only shot a couple boxes of ammo through this gun so far, so I'm looking forward to putting more rounds downrange and telling you what I think. Let's take a look at the trigger. That's one last spec that I like to look at. You can't find this on most manufacturers' websites. In fact, I've never found it on a manufacturer's website, but I'm always intrigued by the trigger. I'm just gonna pull this up, dry fire it. A little bit spongy there. I can't say I loved the way it felt. It's not incredibly heavy, but definitely a little spongier than what I would prefer. Let's go ahead and give it a pull though, see what it comes out at. Six pounds, 6.5 ounces. That doesn't surprise me. Six pounds, 8.4 ounces. Those are pretty consistent. We're right around six pounds, 7.5 ounces. Not too bad as far as trigger weight. The feel, however, I didn't love it. But you know one thing that I've observed through doing these videos is sometimes I don't love the feel of a trigger. I wish it was a little crisper, this is spongy. But when I get to speed shooting, sometimes I shoot it really, really well. So we'll see, it all comes together at the very end. So stay tuned when I get to speed shooting. That's when I'm really gonna test this gun out. It's gonna be about the mount. It's gonna be about how fast it shoots, how well it cycles, looking at recoil reliability. All those things come together in the end. So I'm looking forward to that. The 1012 comes with five different chokes going from cylinder, improved cylinder mod, improved mod to full. I have the cylinder on here today. I didn't get my Carlson's choke tube in time for this video, which I always like to throw a Carlson's on. Also a great partner of TFL. Check them out in the description if you're looking for choke tubes that perform, that are made in the United States. Definitely worth checking out. The shotgun is a 28 inch. They also have 26 inch barrel options. And the 1012 is a three inch shotgun, not a three and a half, which is good for me because I don't necessarily care for the three and a half. So I don't shoot really much for three and a half ammo. So 
I generally will go with the three inch semi-auto shotgun. Now this does come in several different variations. Like I said, this is the all-terrain. It has the green Cerakote on it. There's also a bronze, a gray, there's some camo options, and then there's the just basic field model. Now let's jump into the ergonomics of the 1012. This is the look, the feel, the function. It feels pretty decent. I like the forearm. That feels really good in the hands. The pistol grip here, the angle seems a little bit sharp for me. It just seems a little awkward to get my hand on, but we'll see when I get to shooting it if that ends up being an issue at all. Looking at the bolt release, very adequate bolt release. I wouldn't say it's oversized, and I don't necessarily need them to be oversized. What I want a bolt release to be is easy to operate, right? I want to be able to, almost without looking, get a hold of that, and just like that, very natural. It's got a cross bolt safety on the front side of the trigger. It's this little triangle guy here. I prefer the safety back here. That's just, as I mentioned in all my videos, personal preference, no big deal. I don't like to have to stretch forward to come back. I'd rather go here than get on the trigger. I don't really see any issues with it. Very adequate. Looking at the loading port, putting the shell in there. The edges aren't too sharp. That's something that annoys me with some guns when the edges are really sharp. In fact, one of my favorite guns, the Winchester SX4, is a little too sharp there, more than I'd like. Nice rounded edges, easy to load. We'll pop that out. Trigger guard, adequate, not oversized. Nice texture. I, I like the texture. It's effective, but not overly aggressive. Nothing fancy as far as texture, nothing fancy as far as the wood. I just believe it's a grade A walnut. The rib is a flat rib, meaning it comes off flat with the receiver. It is vented. Most shotguns have vented ribs these days, but it's flat with the receiver. I generally find on a flat rib, I have a hard time getting my head down and staying down, and I end up shooting high, because when your head's high, you'll shoot high. Now, you notice, I got a long, skinny neck and a skinny face. People of my amazing stature generally have a little bit more trouble with the flat rib. If you got a little rounder face, shorter neck, it's easier for you to get down on that gun. Me, I really have to force myself down, and it also forces me up. Because if I get down here, my eyes over here, I really have to get up to it. A little unnatural. So this gun needs a longer length of pull. I don't know that I'll be able to shoot extremely well. In fact, just practicing, I ended up shooting high quite a bit. That's where gun fit is really, really big, really important. So I want to point that out. It has a white bead on front, which is completely adequate. No need for those bright fibers to catch your eye, distract you from your target. We gotta stay target focused, folks. Come on, it's the name of the channel. That's what it's all about. Uh, looking at the butt pad, just kind of a rubber pad. This does not impress me at all. In fact, if I was gonna shoot this gun a lot, what I would do is I would get a hold of the folks at Falcon Strike, figure out which Falcon Strike goes on here, and then I'd put a Falcon Strike recoil reduction system on this gun which is gonna increase the length of pull a little bit. It's also gonna take away a lot of the felt recoil in your shoulder. I've done this on several guns, did not put it on this gun yet, but if you haven't seen a Falcon Strike, just a quick shout out to them, it's this recoil pad right here. I put it on my SX4, super light recoil, but that hydraulic dampening system is pretty darn incredible. I'm a big fan of the Falcon Strike, so if you have a gun that you like, maybe you don't like the recoil, wish it was a little softer shooting, even if it's a gun that doesn't have a ton of recoil, like the SX4, one of the softest shooting shotguns out there, I still have enjoyed putting the Falcon Strike on there and getting even less felt recoil. So that's definitely something I would do here. I do have a link down in the description to Falcon Strike if you wanna check them out as well. Finishing out the ergonomics, I like the cap here on the forearm. It's got these nice grooves in it, relatively easy to get a hold of and take off. I really like that. Let's just see how this mounts up. Boom. Yep, head's high. If I mount this naturally, my head is high. Boom. A stepped up rib, just a little step up, is often more adequate for me. I shoot those way better. I know a lot of field guns, a lot of field models have flat, um, but just heads up there. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention the swivel studs so you could attach a sling if you wanted to. Jordan made sure that I pointed that out in this video because I haven't done that in most of the videos. But you know, sometimes when Jordan speaks, you just gotta listen. True.
Last thing I want to look at with ergonomics is the balance of this shotgun. It's a fairly light shotgun and feels pretty good in the hands. We'll look at recoil because light inertia guns aren't always the most enjoyable to shoot. Inertia has more felt recoil generally than a gas gun and then you make them lighter, it only gets heavier on the felt recoil. And today I got some good ones. I don't just have my target loads. I got some waterfowl. I got some double odd buck. I got some slugs. We're going to put it through this 1012 balance wise. It's pretty, it feels well balanced in the hands. Pretty well balanced gun. I like the way it feels, honestly. But enough talking, let's get to some shooting. Let's take a look at recoil and reliability. Before we do that, let's put some ears in. You know, one of my favorite things about the Axel Ghost Strike is that when I go out and I practice and I'm not actually making videos, I just turn on the music and I just jam. Like my wife's back in the house and she's probably out here and I'm just doing some very terrible dancing, but just like totally enjoying myself. That's one of my favorite things. Throw a few in here. We're just shooting the light target loads. Ounce and an eighth, nine shot. I just want to mount it up, see how it feels. Safety works, check. Recoil actually came pretty well back into my shoulder. A little heavier recoil than I would like for these light target loads, but it's an inertia gun. Kind of right in the ballpark of a lot of the other inertia guns that I've shot. We're gonna do it quick now. That wasn't quick. This gun's a little too short for me. I can tell my thumb's hitting my nose. I'm having trouble shooting this fast. Recoil comes back into the shoulder real nice. As you can see, it's obviously cycling these target loads well. Let's try it from the hip. Wow. I don't know if that's the trigger, but I am having some trouble just naturally shooting this well. So it got a long reset. I'm trying to come back before the trigger's fully reset. There's something kind of unnatural there for me. Well, we know it shoots the target loads all right. Out of curiosity, a lot of inertia guns don't do this well. Some do this well, but that's shoot with the gun over the head. Look at that. It actually cycles really well. If you look at CZ's marketing material, they'll talk about how they shot over 5,000 rounds for this gun with really no cleaning, no maintenance, no, not even lubrication, I think. And they didn't have any mechanical failures. I find that a little hard to believe, but I really have to let off that trigger to get it again. But wow, I'm pretty impressed with how well that shoots the target loads over the head. Now, let's see what recoil feels like. We got three inch, ounce and a quarter, number twos. Cooking a little faster. We're going from 11.45 per second to 14.50. Oh yeah, oh yeah. If I was shooting ducks, I wouldn't care. If I was shooting clay targets, I'd be like, ah, I've had enough. I feel that a little bit more in my face. That was not enjoyable and those are a lot more expensive. So let's we'll leave that set. Let's try, uh, I got some of my Federal double odd buck. No issue there running like a champ. How about if we even threw some slugs in here? Ring some steel. Ring and steel, no problem there. I didn't mind the way that, that shot, the way that felt. Inertia gun, again, a little more recoil than I'd like, but hey, if you want inertia, you're gonna get a little more recoil. Put that Falcon Strike on. I should do that. Yeah, I should make a follow-up video with this gun, or maybe just another inertia gun. Any inertia gun, pick it. I'll throw a Falcon Strike on there. I'll do a before and after and give you my feedback on how big of a difference it makes. I better shoot one, at least one off the machine. I shoot that pretty well. Not bad. Recoil, reliability, I'm, I'm pretty impressed. I, I think it's, it's right in line with what you'd expect out of inertia gun. More on that later as we get to speed shooting, but let's uh, take a quick look at breaking this gun down, see what it looks like inside, see how fast I can take it apart, put it back together. Ready, set, go. Like that forearm cap, that's really nice. Very simple. Ooh, that barrel's hot. The forearm and barrel come off at one time, then we're down to one pin. Now the few times I have taken this shotgun apart, it has not been easy to get this pin out. Yeah, this has been a bugger to get out. And even, oh, I actually got that one out by hand. Had to use a pliers last time. Bolt handle, by the way, I didn't mention this in ergonomics, but it's kind of cool. It has these little holes in it. It's hollow in the middle. I wonder if that'll get full of dirt and debris, but it looks kind of cool, different. 
take the bolt out, as you can imagine. Very simple bolt. It's an inertia bolt. And then we're trigger guard. That's it. That's the CZ1012 right there. Pretty simple design. It looks very, very standard for inertia gun. Um, looks well built to me. The only thing I would mention on quality is maybe more on finish. I haven't loved a few things that I saw, but that's getting nitpicky. They're not big deals. I'll point those out in a second. Let's throw this back together. This trigger group and the tolerances are tight here. I mean, this is a tight fit, but it goes in nice. I'll have to take the back of a, like a hard plastic screwdriver. Use that to beat it in if needed. Put the bolt handle back on. Notice there's no springs, nothing here. It's a springless system, a gasless system. Cap back on. We're ready to rock, very simple. That's one thing you gotta love about inertia. Very simple, easy to clean, easy to maintain, less parts to break. But looking at the quality of build, I just feel like where the forearm meets the receiver, this wood, it, it just doesn't seem as smooth and, and as quality. It seems kind of chunky to me, especially on this side. It might be really hard to see on camera, but it looks like someone cut that with a jigsaw right there. It's just not a nice clean line. Other than that, I, th I think it's pretty well put together, pretty clean. That was one thing when I picked it up, stood out to me. And I don't know if many of the guns are like that or just this one, but just wanted to point that out. All right, folks, it's the moment of truth. It's time to get on the clock and speed shoot. How fast can I smoke three clays out of the air with this shotgun? We're gonna put it to the test. This is where it all comes together. We're looking at how well it mounts, the balance, the recoil, the trigger, all those different things, the fit. And I'll be able to give you at the end of that an overall feel of this shotgun, how I feel it stacks up against some of the other inertia or gas competitors. But enough talking. Let's get the shooting. All right, ladies and gents, here we go. What fascinates me most about this CZ is that it's a pretty decent inertia gun at half the price of some of the other inertias out there. So I know what a lot of you are probably wondering is, hey, it's half the price, is it any good? I'll tell you as soon as we're done with this speed shooting. On the clock, here we go. Ooh. That trigger is chunky. 172, extremely slow. I mean, what I'm doing is I'm pulling that trigger. I'm coming off, anticipating a reset and trying to pull again, just used to some of the other triggers. As I pull, I realize it hasn't reset. I gotta really come off and come back. We can only get faster though, right? It doesn't get much slower than a 172. Oh, got faster. I know that. That was faster. 148. Okay, a 0.94, that's kind of slow to get on it, but my splits were a 2.8 to a 2.6. That's terribly slow. Let's go faster. Oh my gosh, that trigger. 1.64. Often I don't pick up a new gun and just go three for three on the speed throws. It's not lightning fast, but I've shot all nine clays. I won't show you any more unless I get a faster speed. I'm gonna try it though. There it is. I might have went ever so slightly early. 0.67 to get on it. I've done that plenty, so I know that's realistic, but my splits, a 2.6 and a 2.3. Incredibly slow splits. The positive is, I was able to hit quite a bit. Now, close range shooting a cylinder choke, um, but I was able to mount this gun quick. It felt good in the hands. I was able to get the shots off and hit what I was shooting at. The trouble was I was not able to do it fast. This trigger gave me all sorts of fits that we didn't even show in this video, but I struggled. I was on the struggle bus trying to shoot this with this trigger. Drove me absolutely crazy. Now, I also realize that most people in hunting and clay scenarios are not shooting three clays in less than a second and a half. You might not struggle with this trigger as much. But to break it down, looking at this gun, it's nearly half the price of a lot of the inertia guns out there. I won't mention any names, but as a contender, as an option, this is, well, I think, a good option. I don't love the trigger. There's a gun I would like to do a showdown with. The Weatherby Element. That was an inertia gun that surprised me how well it performed and I can't say this one's better or worse until I do a showdown. Comment down below if you'd like to see that showdown because they're, I think in the similar price point, they're both under $1,000 for an inertia gun. But overall, yeah, 
I'm pretty impressed. I wouldn't be afraid to purchase this shotgun if you can deal with the trigger. A lot of other things to really like about the CZ 1012. If you have any other comments or questions, make sure you put them down below. And if you really want to get engaged and dive in deep to the TFL community, make sure you join TFL Insiders. There's a link for that in the description as well. That's all I got for now, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Remember, whether you're in the field or in life, you're only going to hit those shots that you're laser focused on. So live target focused. See ya.